Hello, this is Mike Lyler from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to talk about billboarding, but a specific area of billboarding, and that's building the particles for the billboard themselves. You know, you may see a very attractive billboard. Let me show you one real quick here. Here we go. We see some billboarding going on right here. Let me bring this up real quick here. Here we go. We see some billboarding going on right here, and here's these little particles here. And uh, you may build a similar billboarding system and say, my particles just don't look that good. How do I make my particles look good? How do I create that, um, those images for billboarding? And then we're going to go through that today. And it's just a specific topic, but it's something that can stub you, so we're going to show you how to do that easily, okay? Now, the whole purpose of billboarding, of course, is there's a need for speed. And so... If if you try to render uh, 3D particles uh, without using billboard, it just slows everything down. So what a billboard is, it's just a plane, and you stick an image that looks 3D on it, and you keep that image oriented toward the camera the entire time. It enables you to put, you know, just literally hundreds of particles on the screen and have them react and move very rapidly. So it's a great web trick. And we're going to show you how to do that today. So basically, you want to build that particle that goes onto that image plane, and we're going to use 3ds Max to do it. So we're going to, here's the steps in doing that. We're going to open 3ds Max. We're going to open up the Material Editor. We're going to actually find Max's uh, reservoir of, of uh, materials, and we're going to work with the Material Editor. And uh, we're going to show you basically step-by-step step how to uh, work with that material, process the material, and throw that material onto your particle billboard. And uh, here's essentially all the uh, a little... Uh, conglomerate of steps that you go through to make that happen image and uh, then we're going to actually going to take that image into flash and show you how to put that on the actual billboard itself so and one final important topic of course is mit mapping let's go ahead and mention it right now uh, mit mapping basically is uh, creating images that are the size of a multiple of two like 256 by 256 or 128 by 128 or 32 by 64 they all have to be a multiple of two and when you do that there's a set of pre-filters that have been created that actually enables your um, application to move more rapidly. And I cover this in the book, so go ahead and buy the book and read all about mit mapping. And uh, I ran the system without mit mapping, and it was stalling. And I instituted mit mapping, and it ran very smoothly. So you will save time, processor, and memory on this one. So keep that in mind. So let's move on and open up 3D Max and make our particle. So we're in 3ds Max, and we're going to show you how to make our spherical particle for our billboarding system. And you may ask, hey, Mike, you know, there's a million other ways to do this. And there is. And you could use Photoshop or GIMP or any image processing program to create this spherical particle. But I'm going to use 3ds Max because uh, it's important in 3D work to actually use a nice image processor or a 3D processor like this. Uh, there's many out there. In this book, we'll be talking about 3ds Max. We'll be talking about Blender and Swift 3D, of course. Once you've learned those three, I mean, everything else is similar. But uh, I want to just emphasize to you, if you're going to really get into this business, you need to learn two programs, and that's 3ds Max and Photoshop. Let me just say it three times. You know, you just do it, do it, do it, because uh, that will, in a sense, give you a leg up that other people do not have. And actually, 3ds Max is really, really easy to use. Uh, we're in the perspective viewport here. What we're going to do is open this up. So we're going to hit Alt-W, open up the perspective viewport. And the first thing we're going to do to create this thing is to drag a sphere out on the screen. And if you notice, you have a lot of these little gizmos in here. This is because I am in 3ds Max 9. And if you're not used to 9, uh, actually, it's very nice as well. So let's hit a sphere and just bring that out on the screen. And just, uh, there you go. And at that point, what you want to do is hit M and bring up the material editor. So a shortcut key, M. And up comes your material editor. And here in the... Uh, left side of the program there's a little button here and this is actually a get materials button you want to click on that and up comes this uh, material map browser and what you want to make sure that you've actually clicked on this MTL library so go ahead and click on that and that's going to allow you to navigate to all of uh, 3ds Max's cool pre-built materials so let's open that up and here's the material library, but we're not where we're supposed to be, so I'm going to show you how to navigate to that. So I'm going to go back a few. Let's go to the C drive. Okay. Click on C. Go to Program Files. 
Click on Autodesk. Click on 3ds Max 9 and the material libraries. And click on 3ds Max. And here you have a huge number of materials that you can work with, pre-made materials. Now the great thing about pre-made materials is that they are pre-made. The, the downside of pre-made materials, of course, is that uh, everyone is using them and you want to uniquely create yours. And we'll show you how to do that here. But I want to just take a look at these icons up here. You can click on that and see so you get a whole list of icons. You actually see those. If you click on one of those, you also get them, the previewed right, the materials previewed right here. Uh, I'm going to hit this uh, one right I like this one right here. So I can see all the materials at once. And we're just come along here. We're just going to choose a material that looks good to us. I like metallic objects, so let's go ahead and choose a nice metallic-looking silver here. And this much silver material comes right up on uh, one of my uh, image balls here, my material editor, and I can actually edit the material at this point. So what I can do here, let's bring this down a little bit. Uh, what you're going to see here, there's a little maps right here, and we're going to scroll right here on the side and bring that up and this actually shows you all the different things you can change ambient color, diffuse color, spectral color, diffuse level glossiness, uh, orientation, opacity, filter color, bump mat, isn't that cool? so you can actually come along here and stick different things on here and change your materials and you actually want to do that so it doesn't look like a stock material we're actually come along here and try putting a bump map on our object now let's just show you a few things about this uh, material editor if you don't like to look at a sphere all the time, you can change it over here just by clicking right here and maybe putting a cylinder or putting a square. So if you're going to have a square or a cylinder or whatever, it's a great way to go. Uh, I'm going to go back to a cylinder, since we, excuse me, a sphere, since we're using a sphere. You can double click on this to get a larger image uh, if you want to look at a little larger size. There you go. And uh, we'll keep it large so we can take a look at it and make a few changes to it. Uh, let's move around here and let's actually add a bump map to this particular material. So I'm going to come up here and uh, scroll down. You can think of these as kind of branches of a tree and you're going to be actually adding to those branches. So let's come along here and we'll click on none and we do up comes our material browser and we can come along here and choose something for a bump map. So we clicked on none and now we're going to browse for a bump map. You want to make sure that you're in the MTL library. Let's click on that and you can come along here you can find lots of different maps to put on uh, your bump map and so let's just cruise along here and look over here at the uh, screen and that looks kinda cool let's go ahead and go with that hit the OK button down here you can't see it in your screen but I'm gonna click it and now I've actually see I've put that weird looking texture you can see that it's become a bump map you didn't see in the colors basically just taking the uh, the in a sense the grayscale and applying it in the terms of a bump map onto my image and now I'm ready to put that on my sphere so let's come go back and I don't need this anymore so we'll come along here and I'll just kind of just drag this over here so we can see our perspective view let's get out of some of these things there we go and now there's a number of ways to apply this material to my sphere but you know the easiest way is just to drag and drop it. So if you only have one or two objects in here or you know just a, a low number of objects, this is pretty easy. Typically you want to select those if you have a, a very complex scene, but we just dragged and dropped it. But there's a little box here you can actually click on so you can actually see the material. And we kind of saw it, but it's not uh, very uh, illuminating there. Some of them actually are, uh, when you click on this box right here, show you more than others. I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift Q to do a quick render. So I'm going to take a look at what it's going to look like. And there's my uh, spherical ball. Now, you can spend a lot of time working on this and making some really cool stuff, and I, I really encourage you to do that. We're going to move on with this and go very rapidly and finish up the tutorial. But once again, getting into 3ds Max, learning how to do this, and, and it's just very easy, and I wanted to show this for some of you guys who are wondering, how the heck do I make a nice-looking uh, image? Come along here and hit Save. And from that point, you want to go ahead and give it a name. We'll call it Sphere Test. I'll just throw it on the desktop for now. And you want to make sure that you choose a format. In this particular case, we're going to turn it into a ping. And we're going to hit save. And you want to choose to make sure the alpha channel is checked. And I'm just going to go ahead and the preset here and hit OK. And I've saved that image to my desktop. And you think, OK, you're done. No, I'm going to go in there and actually pre-process now and get that to the right size to put on my billboard.